If you're one of my YouTube trolls, or one of my haters in general, and you buy one of my wands to ruin my reputation, to uh, cast spells against me, what have you, ruin my job, it's not going to work. You can't use a wand against the wand maker who made it. That's magic wand making 101. For this one, we're going back to the origins of the channel. We're delving back into the obscure, the mysterious, the unknown. Today, I'm taking you on a trip to the Cobraverse. I've been hinting at this video for a while. Sometimes I put little Easter eggs in my content, build a little anticipation. I was actually going to make this video about five months ago, but I didn't because I wasn't sure how to go about it. King Cobra JFS is a special case in the world of obscure internet personalities. Josh has a lot of content that spans a lot of years. I think we're actually entering the 9th or 10th year of the Cobraverse. Usually with an internet personality like Josh, that's a great thing. It gives you years of crazy stuff to look through. And that does apply to Cobra as much as it does others like him. Even though he hasn't achieved the notoriety that Chris Chan or Jason Genova has, he's still one of the all-time cult classics on the internet. The problem with Cobra is he's a slow build and it can turn a lot of people away. Sure, there's tons and tons of unintentional comedy to be seen, but because of Cobra's style of content, there's also tons of downtime, lots of filler. Cobra either live streams or uploads long form video vlogs, all 100% raw and unedited, not a single jump cut to be found. It's also very common to sit through a live stream of Josh's and not really see anything outrageous or entertaining, which has caused him to go mostly unnoticed on the internet, but that's where the magic is, because if you tough it out and stick around, or just get lucky with your timing, you start to see there's a little bit more here than your average mundane streamer. Because of Josh's raw and unique nature, he's developed a small but dedicated fan base that's been following him since 2012. The only other comparable personality I've seen with this level of a cult following is the Piss Lord himself, before he became a full-fledged YouTube celery. These people, all you people talking behind your keyboards, you want not say in my face. I'm the biggest fucking person, I would demolish you. There's also a very similar dynamic between the two Malords, just on different scales. So with that said, instead of giving you a drawn out timeline of Cobra's 10 year reign as YouTube's number one grease wizard, I'm going to change the formula slightly this time around. For the most part, I'm going to try to keep this video consistent with how the events unfolded in real time, but not every big event I'm going to discuss with you is in chronological order. For someone who's never heard of King Cobra, a rundown from start to finish isn't really the best way to experience him. I'll be real with you, you could go for hours of him just bitching about women and weeks without nothing funny happening. Josh also has a bit of a habit of rambling, taking huge pauses between sentences, and sometimes he drifts off into his own thoughts at random. So instead of trying to do a typical timeline, I'm going to do more of an introduction to King Cobra and the Cobraverse. I'll be giving you a look into the life of Malord Cobes and what separates him from the rest of the pack. We'll be covering a few key aspects of his crazy life and some of what I consider the pivotal moments that define Cobra. It is important to note though that Josh is known to wipe his entire video archive from time to time, so it becomes hard to follow all the intricate details within the Cobraverse. If it wasn't for a few dedicated fans that saved his videos and re-uploaded them, a lot of the good storylines would have been lost forever, and some are still being uncovered. I've used clips from a few of the re-uploaded videos, I'll link the channels in the comments. I know some of you guys like going a little deeper, I gotcha. Plus, I kinda love clipping channels and archive channels. They're basically digital libraries, and these guys have put some serious time in. Josh personally doesn't really care for them, but over time he's come to the realization that they basically provide free promotion, and drive eyes to him so it's a win-win scenario. They also make his content more viewable to the casual person. If you were to just stumble across Cobra's channel nowadays, it would be easy to miss the magic that actually happens there. So with that said, let's take some time and talk about King Cobra himself. So who is Josh King Cobra JFS? Well in the simplest terms, he's an eccentric goth with mild Asperger's and a lazy eye. I'm not being mean, those are Cobra's own words, and if I'm honest, that would be a very basic first impression someone might get of him. But under the greasy cheese covered exterior, lies one of the most unique, realest people you'll see on the internet. So someone sent me a message on Facebook of some random, some random YouTuber talking some smack, so let's, let's get into it. Let the troll slaying commence. 
Pipe tobacco, pipe lighter, let's go. What up, YouTube? This your boy, G. I just found this stupid idiot on YouTube by the name of King Cobra JFS. The one in the original, baby. Ha 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 ha. Now, this motherfucker is annoying as shit. And you know why you think I'm annoying as shit? I'll tell you why. Because I'm not afraid to be myself. And that triggers you. You're hiding behind this Green Bay Fudge Packers Jersey tough guy persona because you're afraid to be yourself. You put off this vibe of, oh, look at me, I'm so gangster. <laughs> and then you see somebody like me who's not afraid to be themselves, and you're like, oh, fuck, that bothers me. He has courage to be himself in a judgmental society, huh? Even if you put Cobra's appearance completely aside, you have a man who's very impulsive, somewhat quick to temper, speaks his mind, and is surprisingly self-aware. He knows he's not normal, and he doesn't really care. He's just doing his thing, and he's taking his viewers along for the ride. It's a very interesting mix that can be both very cringy and somewhat refreshing at the same time. At first glance, someone might think Cobra could be in the lab troll, but it's not. It's 100% the real deal, which personally makes it much more interesting to me. Way too many cookie cutters out there. At this point, you may be asking yourself, what's so interesting about some gothic meatball in a dark, grungy apartment? Well now, it's not necessarily Cobra himself that's the interesting part. Don't get me wrong, there's interesting aspects about him. Like the fact that he believes he's a wizard that can conjure black magic, who also has the propensity to drop bars from time to time. So I made a video of my green underwear like I just don't care. Goddamn, had my of age fangirls ready to stare. One girl said to me at night cause she liked the way my underwear hugged me tight. The double stands are a bitch. So fuck it, leave it in a ditch. My dick is the shit. 7,000 subscribers, yo dick ain't shit. My dick, fuck Katy Perry. Yo dick is just plain scary. He could definitely give Jay Cream a run for his money. Someone needs to make that collaboration happen. Speaking of gelatinous blobs, Cobra is also a proficient chef and food connoisseur. Food and drink reviews are his staple. Sometimes he shows off his own personal recipes. Sometimes he teaches the YouTubes the proper way to waterboard a pizza. But if you're lucky enough, you might just get to see how a true Malort prepares a five-star meal. God damn it. I'm sick of dropping shit, you know. But it'll get cooked off in, in the video, in the uh, fryer, so. All right, you got all your french fries. And as you can see, that's bubbling. So what we're gonna do is just, yeah, we're gonna, I would just dump these in here, but I don't want the grease to splatter, so. Your next step is just. It's just drop them in there like that. Ah, eh, fuck it. God damn it! Stop! <sighs> Fuck my life, YouTube. I need salt. I hope he's got content insurance. As fun as rapping and food reviews are, in reality, the real interesting aspect about Cobra isn't his hobbies. The real drawing point that keeps people watching is the overarching stories that develop over time. His content could be best described as episodic. See, because of Cobra's live streaming, his lifestyle, and his unfiltered nature, there are thousands of hours of Cobra footage that spans damn near 10 years. And because of that, you get to see Cobra evolve from a fast-talking, lucid goth kid to a badass ashtray Casanova he is today. You also get to see the plethora of degenerate strange beings he surrounds himself with, each with their own bizarre characteristics and personality. From his strange girlfriends to casual acquaintances and even close friends, they're all crazy and they're all content. Josh is very accepting when it comes to strange individuals. That's definitely one thing people have to give him credit for. He gives basically anyone a chance. He's, he's not judgmental when he meets someone, 
but he is naive, which leaves room for a lot of strange, degenerate people to squeeze into his life. Some of the more famous acquaintances of Josh would be Steve, aka Mr. Goat, a uh, furry content creator who also has a girlfriend in the form of a blow-up sheep. He's hands down the most degenerate person in the Cobraverse and would fit nicely in a Mr. Medica video. Before Scrapper Steve, there was his much-loved BFF, Couch Guy Chris, and you can't forget the fan favorite, good old homeboy Scotty. May he rest in peace. I get it turned. All right. All right. Right there, you can see. Oh God, here we go. Let's do a fat one for the camera. Well, that's not too fat, but. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh damn. Ugh, snuff burns. Snuff burns. Fuck. This <laughs> is. There you go, B. Yeah, what's that? Um, what's the snuff burn like? Oh, God damn it. Yeah, buddy. Oh, my fucking pain levels over nine thousand. This is. Uh. Over the years, Cobra has applied a constant, steady stream of unintentional entertainment for anyone willing to take the time to see it. Some of it gets a little dark, I'm not gonna lie, but it's all 100% real. And that's the best part, it's not forced, it's all real, it's all Cobra's life, and he basically lays it out for everyone to see in all its glory. The good, the bad, and the hilarious. One of the more prominent themes in Cobra's content over the years is in regards to his personal love life. When you put yourself out there like Cobra does, it becomes very hard to keep things on the down low. This, in combination with Cobra's open nature, has resulted in quite a few funny stories and incidents being shared with his viewers over the years. Josh's whole first relationship was basically fully captured on film and uploaded online. One of those relationships you don't really talk about, unless you're Josh, and then you end up sharing every single detail and blasting it all over the internet. Of course, I'll elaborate. It all started one fateful day at Job Corp's campus. Josh met a young woman named Stephanie and hooked up with her in a bathroom. After that, they started dating long distance and even had plans to make the permanent move into the Cobra Lair. She was featured in videos for upwards of a year, but that all came to an abrupt end after a string of infidelity from both parties. Hey YouTube, this is King Cobra JFS with another video, and I've had quite a day so far. Now when I left work, I went to go clock out, and I was already in a bit of a cranky mood, I'll get to that in a second. Um, let's go clock out, and according to the uh, clock, I hadn't clocked in yet. So, yeah, I got a little pissed off, really? So, that's basically what I did, that right there, you know. So, as I'm walking away, this co-worker of mine, he uh, apparently had worked there before, and um, he decided to open his fat fucking mouth. He's like, you don't need to be throwing fits over here. I'm like, you know what, why don't you shut your fat mouth? And I walked out after that. I was clocked out, I was done for the day, whatever, right? Now the reason why I was a little pissed off, well this morning I wake up to find out that my girlfriend Stephanie cheated on me. Now I realize I have no room to bitch and complain about it because I have cheated on her in the past, but that was a one time thing and I haven't made an effort to do such things since. Just a little context here, so Cobra and Couch Guy Chris one of his friends from the early years, decided one night to go have a couple beers and hit the town. One thing led to another, and while they ended up partaking in a gross premarital threesome with a pregnant chick for a pack of smokes. Yeah, I think it's safe to say, mistakes were made. Stephanie forgave Josh, but retaliated a few months later by participating in the evil art of sodomy with her ex-boyfriend. Here's what happens. The first time, I wouldn't really count the first time because she said this dude fingered her, supposedly a friend of mine. All right, whatever. But then today she tells me that the same dude had anal sex with her. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's worse, that this story is actually true or that Josh uploaded videos to tell people about it. Regardless, it's part of the early lore in the Cobraverse. And far from the last time Josh would have relationship problems. Cobra's hardcore viewers like to describe these as sagas. Each of them with a unique theme based around Josh's current life situation or interests at the time. Some are used to describe periods where Josh had a different girlfriend or roommate. I'm not going to go into all the sagas, we'd be here for days. 
but there are a few that really define the Cobraverse for showing different aspects of Josh's life. Another good one in my opinion is the Summer Saga. There's a two hour documentary created on this by Bite Size Cobra Vids and Anonymous Casper. Actually, there's been a few homemade documentaries about Cobra over the years. One by a channel named Trapped, which was a look into the daily life of Cobra during 2012 and 2013. Bite Size Cobra Vids covered the Summer Saga and many others. And a channel called the Internet Collective covered the hilarious Second Serpent Saga, which we will talk about more at the end of this video because it's gold. They also archived hundreds of Josh's old videos so his viewers can learn the raw history in all its glory. Even though it's safe to assume the Summer Saga is centered around Josh and his love interest at the time, which it is, I have to be honest though, his girlfriend isn't the most interesting part about it to me. She's just a deranged furry, nothing really new there. The most interesting aspect to me is that you get a great picture of what Josh's day-to-day -day friends are like and how they interact with each other. You really get a peek into his weird social circles and the radically different people he surrounds himself with on a daily basis. Top tier insight. So the key players of this arc are Josh, his ex-girlfriend Stephanie, his new girlfriend at the time, Summer, and his two radically different friends, Homeboy Scotty and Scrapper Steve the Furry. At this point, you have an idea who Josh is, and you know how his relationship with Stephanie ended. Summer is a woman Cobra met after a random hookup one night. Summer's weird, she's a type of furry. I'm not the most well-versed in this area of the internet, I'm not gonna lie. I do know she's considered an offshoot of the furry fandom. Uh, Scully? I don't know, just another freak in a piss-stained fursuit to me. Next is Steve. Steve's a dude in his 30s that Cobra befriended. Steve's also a furry freak that was introduced to Summer while Cobra was seeing her. I don't know what the hell is going on with Wyoming, but there's a shitload of furries there. I gotta warn you guys, Steve's a pretty twisted individual. There are some pretty dark rumors out there about him, like pretty bad stuff. I haven't seen anything firsthand, but from what I've heard and seen referenced in the discussion, the dude's a total freak. The last person on the list is Homeboy Scotty. And how to describe Homeboy Scotty? Well, you know Trailer Park Boys? Corey and Trevor in particular? Well, Scotty is the spiritual successor to those two, the real life essence and generally hated amongst the Cobraverse for constantly lying and being a general douchey person. Scotty himself can be a source of unintentional comedy like Cobra, but due to him lying to Josh constantly and falsely getting his hopes up with possible mates over the years, the Cobra fanbase has grown to somewhat loathe him, and at this point, he's just a meme. And a little bit unhinged himself. Scotty actually made the local news in 2015 for his shit capades. One night he was hanging out alone at the Cobra Lair while Josh was out, and another one of Josh's friends came over, and decided to hang out with Scotty till Josh came back. Well, for whatever reason, they ended up having a little altercation, and uh, I'll just read you an expert from the article. The victim had gone to a friend's apartment, but his friend was not home and instead drank whiskey with homeboy Scotty. According to the report, the two then argued over a missing tobacco pipe and Scotty took out what the victim thought was a katana sword. Scotty stabbed the armchair he was sitting in several times before raising to his feet and cutting his own arms. He then cut the victim with the sword. The victim told the police that he tried to grab the sword away from Scotty but missed. When interviewed by the officers, Scotty said the victim began saying something about satanic and then the victim cut himself with the sword. Scotty said the victim then cut him and showed the officers several scabbed over superficial cuts on his arms. The report states Scotty changed his story several times and eventually admitted to intentionally cutting the victim. When searching the apartment, police found a sword and blood splatter near the armchair with several slashes into the cushion. Yeah, um, that's our homeboy Scotty. So now that you know everyone involved in the arc, let's talk about what happened. So in November of 2017, Cobra broke his year-long relationship dry spell by announcing on Facebook that he finally got laid again. There was a lot of speculation at first, but Josh quickly alluded to who it was and even let her name slip in a video confirming what people thought. Some of his fans sent his ex-girlfriend Stephanie messages trying to get a reaction out of her, resulting in her blasting Josh all over Facebook. Josh quickly started a live stream where he was taking pot shots at Stephanie's choice to be in a weird polyamorous relationship with a middle-aged couple. Apparently the other day when Stephanie was talking shit about me behind my back, the reason why she was doing it is because she doesn't want other chicks talking to me. And like, bitch, you're stupid. You are so fucking stupid, okay? I'll admit, the first four weeks, the first four weeks after a breakup always seem to suck. But I've gotten over it. I don't care that she's with Damien and Megan. It's quite sad, to be honest. You know, especially with Damien's fucking age and he's having sex with someone old enough to be his daughter. That just screams midlife crisis, bro. Oh, that just screams midlife crisis, bro. Just between the Facebook feud between the two seemed to wind down, it was announced in a live stream that Stephanie had people go to Cobra's work and confront him. He wasn't there at the time, but he was informed after the fact. Yeah, apparently the people that were gonna threaten to kick my ass or whatever, the people that were trying to kick my ass, 
over some drama on the people who are trying to kick my ass over some drama on Facebook. Two of the people were too fucking scared to fight me by themselves. So these two individuals end up bringing a fucking gun with a round in the chamber concealed to my place of business. And they thought I was working on Saturday. So they were going to wait for me to go on a cigarette break and they were going to confront me. He actually looks a little shook. While this was all unfolding online, something else was going on in Cobra's eye all life. See, his new girlfriend Summer was a tattoo artist who was interested in branching out her business opportunities. Knowing that Summer was a furry, Josh introduced her to his weirdo friend Scrapper Steve because they had a common interest. The three of them ended up talking about potentially starting a business venture together based on selling homemade and most likely used fursuits online. Anyway, Scrapper Steve wasn't interested in partnering with Cobra. He was with Summer though. Josh being naive was oblivious to the fact that Scrapper Steve wanted to give his girlfriend the good old beaver tail and he looked at the fact that Steve only wanted to work with Summer as something harmless. Cobra himself isn't interested in any of that furry shit, so he didn't really care. The only thing he cared about is the fact that he was finally getting laid. Homeboy Scotty, on the other hand, he sensed that something was afoot. A roach always knows another roach. And in an attempt to redeem himself with the Cobra fanbase, Homeboy Scotty set up this plan to trick Steve into admitting what his true intentions were. Scotty, on his road to redemption, told Cobra about his plan, and they called Steve under the impression that they had work for him. Once Scotty got Steve on the phone, he used his weasel ability to trick him into admitting that he was interested in Summer because of their shared degeneracy. Steve also claimed in the call to have been talking to Summer for some time, and together they were mocking my Lord Cobra's daily hygiene. 2017 was a rough year for Josh. In usual fashion, the viewers had to be informed on the happenings, and immediately after the conversation with Steve, Cobra and Scotty took to the internet to expose the truth to his fan base. What up, guys? What up? Stay tuned, we got something for you. Everybody, get everybody that knows Josh in up here, dude. Get, invite everybody that knows Josh, because this is some serious shit, dude. You know, try to lie to me. Fuck All right, since, try, since, yeah, so you hold, hold, to lie hold, to me, hold, hold on, let me say it, let me say it. All right, what happened was, you know Josh just found a girlie, right? Yeah. And that's awesome. It's fucking badass. I'm happy for Josh. And she's a good woman, and he deserves her, all right? He he, this, he doesn't deserve the bullshit what's coming from, all right? You want to know the bullshit? Y'all want to know the bullshit? The bullshit is Steve, Mr. Goat, whatever you fucking want to call him, goat fucker, whatever, all right? This is what happened. Try to get me, like, try to fuck Josh's girl, dude. Straight up, Steve was trying to get with my girlfriend. Trying his fucking damnedest, dude. Sicko Steve tried to defend himself by releasing his version of what transpired, and he claims that Summer was more of an active participant than what was initially let on. I know there's a lot of lies floating around and a lot of people uh, spreading, spreading stuff about me. Um, King Cobra, like King Cobra, sitting there saying that I had intimacy with his girlfriend, which I never did. The meaning sparks fly could mean anything. It has said that word, those words have many different meanings. Like you get like, I didn't want nothing other than just business. You know, I can't help it from what she told me on, on, a, on a phone call that, you know, you know, a certain somebody is dirty down there and she got a viral infection in her throat from it and that he was forcing sex upon her and and uh, other things like that and pretty much saying that she wanted to break up with him and stay single on that date. Something tells me Steve shouldn't really be talking about anyone else's hygiene. I bet the inside of that suit smells like Vaseline and sin. God damn. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I see a fursuit, I get the unholy urge to drive a stake through it and give it the good old baptism of fire. And I'm not even religious. Ugh. At this point, any normal person would have simply just said fuck it and cut all contact with the parties involved. Cobra, on the other hand, decided it would be best to just forget about it and move on. Squash the beef, per se. Josh is quick to temper and impulsive, but he doesn't particularly like to have long, drawn out conflicts with people. He'll lash out and defend himself air his dirty laundry all over the internet. He definitely isn't the innocent little YouTube salary he likes to pretend to be, but he's not the type of person to actually go out and seek confrontation. These things tend to come and find him. Wanting to put all this behind him, he started a live stream to ramble and offer Steve a truce. Steve claims that me and Scott threatened him. We never once threatened him. I literally still can't believe the Steve's on YouTube continuously talking shit. Like, it's pathetic. You think, you know, he'd stop eventually, but... I want to publicly agree 
So stop talking shit about him on YouTube if he agrees to do the same about me. And not just me, but homeboy Scotty as well. On the for real, I will make a peace agreement publicly on YouTube. And I will agree to stop talking shit if he does. Now, before Steve, Scott, and myself are no longer friends, before all of this happened, Steve gave Scott a computer, and Steve forgot to delete all of the files on said computer. And Steve's sister came across a video of Steve fucking an inflatable goat. And she said she saw things that were not pleasant. And she said it was embarrassing, to say the least. So whatever fucking dirt Steve thinks he has on me can't be as bad as knowing the people who have that video. So if Steve wants to make my life a living hell, I can make his ten times worse. I could have the entire fucking internet laughing at his sorry ass right now. For some reason, this wasn't enough for Steve and he assumed he was in some kind of position to negotiate. Instead of talking to Josh offline, he climbed into his piss-stained fursuit and uploaded a video with his current offer. I will do a peace treaty with King Hogwarts under one condition. That supposed video of me that Scotty has needs to be deleted off that computer that I sold Scott a long time ago. And if that can happen, then I believe maybe I will do a peace treaty. Having just about enough of the unnecessary furry drama, Josh gets to the point where he's basically had enough of all the bullshit with Steve and he lays into him one final time. You see what happens people when I try to be an adult and even though I did nothing wrong, even though I did nothing wrong, I still try to make a peace treaty with that goat fucker. And now he's making a video saying he doesn't want to do the peace treaty anymore. Well fuck him dude. It just shows you can't trust Steve. I tried to make a peace treaty with him and now he's just being a, a little bitch. Steve says he wants to meet me in person and have you sign a paper treaty that are on his terms. Fuck that. Well, if you want to, Summer, you can, but you have to come over here and get it. I'm not signing any goddamn paper treaty. Fuck that, dude. By this time, the King Cobra fan base has developed a real disdain towards Steve, and for good reason. He was never really liked, and is a freak who had promoted Zoophilia in the past. Anyone who followed him did it to troll him and torment, and that increased once he tried to jack my lord Cobra's girlfriend, who was also throwing Steve under the bus and threatening to sue him. Fearing a mob of Cobra trolls bloodthirsty for furry blood, Steve went and got his brother to intervene and help mediate a truce between the two. It ended on a civil note, but eventually Cobra came to his senses and just cut all contact with Steve to focus on his relationship with Summer. But the peaceful period was only brief, because by the beginning of the next month, their relationship was on the rocks again. She claimed one of Josh's fans hacked into her Facebook just to delete the only pictures she had of her kid. Even though she loved Josh, she couldn't handle the whole side effects of his YouTube fame and eventually used this as a reason to break up with him. On top of deleting Summer's only photos and video she had of her only kid, on top of that, they were going on Facebook saying it wasn't hers. These stupid fucking hackers. And basically, long story short, after Summer's Facebook account got hacked, she basically said, look, I still want to be your friend, Josh. You're a cool dude to hang around. I can't take this anymore. I can't take the fucking harassment. And honestly, I don't blame her. I mean, I'm a little disappointed, to say the least. I finally meet a girl I have a little bit in common with, and I, I guess I'm not allowed to fucking have that, am I? It would have been nice if people could have just let me and Summer be, but they couldn't. They just couldn't leave it the fuck alone, could they? And Summer said, quite honestly, she was like, it's not you, it's them, okay? I can't take the celebrity status. You know what I'm saying? I have a personal hunch that uh, Summer is a compulsive liar, and a lot of the events that were blamed on the trolls were actually fabricated by her and didn't happen. I don't know, Josh has some trolls that do some fucked up shit, but they don't hack people or actively try to ruin relationships. They do things like bait Josh into reacting online. Hacking into Summer's Facebook for the sole purpose of deleting her only pictures of her kids only really affects her, 
and logically isn't even really Josh's fault. I don't know, I just don't see them doing that. It's not really their MO. Think about it. If there was a couple of elite hackers watching Cobra, they would have gone after Piss Suit Steve first. He was way more hated and disliked than anyone. Summer was just some weird chick. Either way, it doesn't really make a difference. And Cobra and Summer did manage to salvage a friendship out of it. Scrapper Steve, on the other hand, I don't think things went so well for him in the end. Last time I checked, he was trying to strike a deal with a troll for $20. Okay, Chi Chi wants me to do something in, for him in return for $20. I don't know what it is, but um, just as long as it's nothing nasty, sick, twisted, perverted, or has to do with anything about the fake story about the zoophilia thing, I think will be good. He might have cannibalized his first suit for nourishment, I don't know. To be honest, I couldn't really care less. But it was probably a good time to talk about the King Cobra viewer base a little bit more. As you can guess, Josh has some trolls. He's kind of always had a few people that like to mess with him. And the main reason is because you're almost always guaranteed a reaction. Like I said before, Cobra is impulsive and quick to temper. He's also known for his quick troll slaying skills, black magic spells and all. Random dude driving by in his car doesn't even fucking know me or his truck or whatever. He's all screaming out the window, you're a faggot, you're gay, I don't care, fuck you, and just keeps going on and on and on and on. And I ignored him walking away. But then I shouted, may the person who was talking shit on me get into a car crash. Because I had about enough of it. And... Well, a couple seconds later, I heard the person who was talking shit scream, Fuck, I got into a car crash! And I'm sitting there laughing about it hysterically. I'm like, you wanna talk shit to somebody who has dark powers? Keep talking shit, see where it gets you. He's lucky I didn't use my magic to fucking kill him. Which, death magic is some serious shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I bet when he comes across this video, he's gonna think I'm a hater and trying to troll him. Incoming black magic attack, which isn't really necessary. I'm not a hater, I'm just a connoisseur of internet crazy, that's it. There's something special about these online misfits. Some of the defenses Cobra's developed against trolling over the years are protected black magic spells, 45 minute rants, and his world famous tactic, flashing his dong on stream. None have had much success over the years, and the latter has actually led to a few bannings. There are two types of people who watch Cobra. People who accidentally stumble upon him and think he's a freak. And then there's those who venture into the depths of the Cobraverse and interact with him. If that sounds familiar, that's normal. I told you, there's a lot of parallels to the monkey prick here. At first glance, it would appear that Cobra does have a lot of haters, but that's a bit of a misconception here. A lot of the people that you would consider to be trolls don't have malicious intent. There are people that do take things to crazy extremes, like calling his workplace and getting him fired, or most recently where he was swatted. Let the haters talk shit because they're jealous. Huh? Oh, man. <sighs> couple more bites. Just a couple more bites. Come on. I'm telling you right now, between those two items, it's pretty filling. Mmm, shop Wyoming first. Hey, what's up? Okay, I did. Okay, okay, okay. You're all right, you're all right. You go right. There's a shotgun in here. Ready? Put that down. 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 Put that yeah. All right, back clear, check the soft here. Back clear. 
But that's less of a Cobra problem and more of an internet issue in general now. I've mentioned this in videos before, I don't really care what happens between two grown adults online. I'm no one's father, I'm not really here to establish any kind of morality line, and I'm not an online vigilante. I do this for entertainment. Now with that said, I can't help but reiterate how everyone needs to kind of put the whole swatting shit to rest. There's no reason to ever swat someone. And by that I mean, calling a fraudulent police report, regardless of your intent, is a retarded thing to do. Doesn't matter if it's a joke, it's just a retarded thing to do. When Cobra was swatted, those cops came in hot and heavy, with SWAT gear, and that could have went horribly wrong in multiple ways. Plus, Chris Hansen will probably use you to rejuvenate his career. He's on the case now. King Cobra JFS. Hmm, could be a predator's name, but I think in this case it's a successful musician. Anyway, Chris Hansen here of Hansen vs. Predators and Catch a Predator. Listen, I understand you were recently the target of a malicious SWAT prank. Nobody will ever condone that. It's so dangerous. I see it all the time as a journalist and it, there's no place for it. So I, I feel bad that you had to go through it. You should also know that my team is on the case and will be investigating and working around the clock to hunt down the person or people responsible. So you can have a seat, relax now because I'm on the case. Please know that and that I'll be watching. Also the Cobra cult says, hey, take care. All right, keep up the good work. Again, the, the internet was a mistake. Anyway, as far as trolling goes in the Cobraverse, besides a few isolated incidents, the majority is harmless and a lot of people Josh considers trolls are just people who like to watch the spectacle. There are always going to be outliers, people that hate everything and everyone, but that's just part of life. The majority of Josh's viewers enjoy interacting with him because of how raw and unique he is, not to see how much damage they can do to him. It's not all bad though. Some of them take it the extra mile and they buy him pizzas during his live streams, they send him packages in the mail. Josh has got some pretty interesting fan mail over the years. Lots of drinks, lots of tobacco and cigars, and a couple more interesting items, like a, uh, a fleshlight that he used and then became ashamed of, so he had to destroy it on camera. I'm going to destroy this pocket pussy on camera, and not with my dick either. Like if women don't really find me that attractive, for the majority of them anyway. Like what the fuck is this? A, a fucking pocket pussy, really? Fucking, I, I appreciate the thought, you know what I'm saying? Like, the pentagram t-shirt is badass. Okay, I appreciate the thought that someone out there cared enough to send this to me. But when I have no sex drive, you can't expect me to fuck this thing. You're like, somebody send this guy a pocket pussy, and I deleted the comment because I'm like, no! Don't fucking send me a pocket pussy, goddammit! I find sex to be disgusting. Like, what the fuck? I'm glad everybody think. I'm glad everybody finds the fact that I can't get pussy to save my fucking life. I'm glad people find it to be so goddamn funny that they're like, "Oh, we feel sorry for this guy because he can't get laid." Here, let's send him a pocket pussy. Fuck you. This is where I think about love and companionship. Believe it or not, it actually gets worse or funnier, depending on how deranged you are. But with that said, because of Cobra's relationship problems, a few times he's entertained the idea of getting an artificial companion or a love doll. You know, it's stuff out there dealing with the real chicks. He's talked about it a few times over the years, and people have mailed him blow-up dolls knowing that he's gonna have a fit because they're cheap. Cobra's got standards. A few times he's tried to start GoFundMes for higher quality ones, but that in turn always gets flagged down. But after a while, one of his fans actually went out and bought him a thousand dollar doll and mailed it to him. Cobra waited no time in displaying it in all its glory. I had a fan of mine send me something. Yeah, one of my fans sent me a uh, freaking sex doll. <laughs> um, he forgot to put the wig in the box, so I'm using this one until I get the other wig. The doll also came with an extra head. I also got... I got two games for the Xbox One. I got Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and The Division. And the funny thing is, I don't have an Xbox One, but that's quite alright. I can still save these. 
And now I could save these for uh, when Caden gets his Xbox One back. I also got three fresh bags of moist pipe tobacco. I was gonna say, damn, she's got a wig and it comes off and she, and you have trichoteria. You two would be perfect for each other. But she wants to date me instead. <laughs> I cannot believe I just got cock blocked by my own dummy. <laughs> you know, you spend hours on the internet and you think you're desensitized and then bam, you see something like this. Yep, the internet still makes me uncomfortable. That's what I've ultimately learned from this. The Union of Souls just wasn't meant to be in the end though. See, while Cobra was job hunting the next morning, something tragic happened. Something vile. A deranged madman broke in and kidnapped fun-sized Felicia. Luckily the police were on it. They were going to serve justice and find the culprit. And during a random traffic stop, the police tracked it down and busted the vile individual. In a methed out rage, the madman stole Josh's beloved wife just to brutally deassemble her for scrap metal. It was one of the most vile acts the Cobraverse has ever seen, and a great injustice. Okay, I'm being a little dramatic. The only real injustice is that this actually didn't happen. I guess Josh broke her down during a test drive, and he may or may not have cut her up Jeffrey Dahmer style out of rage and shame. All mention of this event has been wiped from official Cobra records in the form of a complete channel restart. He also banned any conversation of the incident. It's a real shame. And that's not the only time Cobra's gotten gifts that have caused some controversy. More recently was the infamous Green Undie banning, which is just a little too much for me to personally handle. So a viewer sent Cobra a pair of super tight green spandex. The pair of undies in question had a certain peen sleeve. And yeah, a female viewer, who was probably a catfish, talked Cobes into putting them on, and then he proceeded to leave them on and periodically get up and show them off. Zero self-awareness. Facebook couldn't handle it and served him a 30 day ban for nudity, which is kind of funny because he wasn't necessarily naked. Josh's viewers have a surprisingly large impact on his day to day life, from interacting with him in live streams, to video chatting with him and sending him care packages, to even defending him against other creators. It's clear to see his fan base is highly skilled at influencing the direction of his content. They open the door for entertainment and Cobra just steps right through it. If a person makes a video about him or references him, it's quickly sent to Cobra to react to. Which is almost a guarantee, Cobra loves to have a good fit and upload a response. And it's some of his best content. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy King Cobra back at you with another video. And the Internet Collective sent me a video of some fat turd talking shit on YouTube. Holy shit, YouTube. Yeah, this is the fat, miserable retard talking shit on me. Look at you, you fat, disgusting little piggy. Look like you had too many fucking Big Macs and Twinkies. There have been a few times when his fan base has inadvertently caused Cobra to start a couple feuds online. One time, Cobra ended up shouting on another gothic YouTuber named Gothic D, something harmless. Immediately, his viewers started posting on her channel, insinuating that they'd make a great couple. Harmless shit. A couple of detractors told her that Josh was in love with her, and without even looking into it, she went full bitch mode and started bashing him online. This resulted in his fans trolling the hell out of her in comments in defense of Cobra. The best feud, if I had to pick one, hands down would be what was referred to as the Second Serpent Saga. Anyone familiar with Chris Chan and Liquid Chris are going to eat this shit right up. I know I did. In order of events, the majority of this arc actually took place several months before the dumpster fire that was Steven Summer. I had to save it for the end though, because it's the most entertaining and interesting to me personally. Imitation trolling is an underrated art. So March. 2017. It started out like any other period of time in Cobra's life. He was spending his days making wands and his strange food concoctions. But the road to success is full of twists and turns, which Cobra would experience firsthand. Out of nowhere, a mysterious man appeared. He claimed to be the real King Cobra, and that Cobra we all knew was nothing but a fake imposter. So, that other King Cobra. Or should I say, as I recently found out, as I recently found out YouTube, his real name, Andrew Moore, nice real badass name there, Andrew Moore. Word quickly started to get around. Were we duped this whole time? Were we conned by the great grease wizard? It was hard to tell, they looked identical. And they even had the same mannerisms, and even lived in the same house. 
The only difference is, the new Cobra spelled his name with a K. At first, Josh thought nothing of it. Just another hater trying to get relevancy and leech off the true Cobra's YouTube fame. Dude, you're not fooling anyone. Okay, I, I have people that have followed me for years. And you're just a poser, dude. <laughs> Flattering as it may be, yes, you are a poser. Nothing more, and nothing less. So this is part of what I really find interesting about Josh. The whole being self-aware but naive at the same time. Like Josh gets what's happening here to some degree. He can tell that the new Cobra is imitating him and poking fun at his appearance and personality. He also caught on about the green screen. But what Cobra doesn't get is why he's doing it. Josh thinks the new Cobra is legitimately trying to steal his fan base and become famous off his name. Like Josh has some kind of superstardom effect where he's so famous that he can actually make other people famous. Straight up YouTube celery. If Josh didn't fall into this habit of impulsively reacting to almost anything, no one would have heard of the new Cobra. But Josh brought him into the forefront and mentioned him to his viewers. Josh made him part of the lore. Like, this dude's clueless, and eventually the phony King Cobra JFS is gonna get what's coming to him, and he's going to rue the day he made fun of me. Oh, and I want to interject here, YouTube. I work in a dish pit. I work in a dish pit with the real gothic King Cobra. And if you work in that dish pit, I ain't never seen you there before. Right? So seriously, if you work there, we'll step outside. And the Cobraverse fan base? Well, they kind of ran with it. They knew what was up, and they know Josh very well. There's some potential for some good content here if encouraged. So a lot of them started to play along with it, not confused, just to see where this would go. As Josh mentions the new Cobra and more eyes inevitably see him, more people see what he's doing and more people join in. It's like a snowball effect, hilarious to watch in real time. Josh is dead set that his viewers are too stupid to tell the two Cobras apart, which starts causing him to get really agitated over the subject and he continues the cycle of response videos. I just hope that the King Cobra JFS faker motherfucker the fake King Cobra JFS is going to get schooled on guitar. Eventually, the new Cobra with a K starts to up the ante a little bit, matching his uploads with his own similar content. Josh does a food review, the new Cobra pumps up one also. Since Josh's fans sent him packages to unbox on video, the new Cobra would unbox his own fan mail. It's not the sex doll I wanted. This is cool too. Uh, and this is a letter for me. Says, Dear Real King Cobra. I doubt anyone actually sent him that. That would just be mean. As the days passed and each Cobra tried to prove which one was the real OG, things started to take a serious route. The new Cobra made a grave error and took things way too far. The straw that broke the camel's back between the two Malords was when the new Cobra decided to use his trump card. Phony Cobra's very own hair. His famous luscious hair in my palm. He took the feud to the next level by using black magic and threatening Josh with a magical attack if he didn't submit. Cobra really takes this shit seriously. What's up YouTube? So the fake King Cobra JFS tried to cast a spell on me. It's so fucking laughable, dude. <laughs> he wants me to admit, he wants me to lie to you, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all like that. And he basically said if I didn't respond within the next 24 hours, ooh, this motherfucker doesn't know shit about magic, man. He's so desperate for attention. The thing he doesn't realize is he has no idea who he's fucking with. You keep impersonating me, guess what? You're gonna find your shit royally fucked up. And it's gonna be a lot sooner than you realize, dude. And, uh, this dude says he's gonna cast a fucking spell on me. He doesn't realize that my dark powers protect me and that anything he tries to cast on me will not work. And on top of that, it's all just gonna bounce back on him. So, you know, yeah. And you have been warned, fake King Cobra JFS, your shit's about to get royally fucked up. 
Josh was right, the magic spell that the new Cobra casted was reflected back on him and banished him to an alternate dimension to never be heard from again. Or in normal person's words, Josh may have gotten fed up and said he was going to start flagging down videos, so the new Cobra might have backed off and unlisted his. Or he might have just gotten bored. Either way, it was somewhat of an anticlimactic conclusion. He would make a brief resurrection after a few months to stir the pot again, but other than that it seemed that Cobra with a K was packing away his tobacco pipes and eyeliner for other prospects, and was doomed to fade back into obscurity. And that's the tale of the Serpent Saga. Or so I thought. So if you made it this far into the video, it's safe to assume that you find Cobra an interesting mess. Maybe you know him and you're seeing what someone else's perspective is. Either way, I'm going to finish this video off with something special. Something that was sent to me anonymously. Something not many have seen, but it's pretty important to the Cobra lore. Now I don't like using long clips. The longest one I've ever used in this channel was about 3 minutes. The clip I'm ending this video with is 3 times that length. It's long, but it's gold, and I had to fit it in somehow. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to King Cobra JFS and the obscure situations he finds himself in. I'll put some links in the comments if you want to dive into this yourself to get the raw experience of this obscure internet cult classic. But with that said, I'll see you guys next upload. And to finish this video off, get ready for the rare, true ending and climax of the Second Serpent Saga. Okay, so I don't want to make this confusing while I referee and delegate, so... Uh, I'm going to call Josh King Cobra because I believe him to be the one and only true King Cobra. What do you want me to call you? Uh, I'm Josh Saunders, so, but you can call me King Cobra. I'll call you just Josh, but I'm not calling you Josh Saunders. I'm not calling you King Cobra, okay? Uh, no, you can call me... Uh, King Cobra. All right. Well, we're gonna start here, uh, guys. But when you when you say my name, just say it with a K. All right. Who wants to go first? <clears throat> you go. All right. Now, most of you will recognize me. Even when I do delete my videos, I do have a habit of doing that. But you'll notice that right there in the vice clamp, I have a staff I'm working on for a buddy of mine and I also have prepared a brand new drink combination that no one has ever seen before and anybody who has followed me on YouTube long enough knows about my symbol right here yeah. and then they also know about the tattoo that I got done at Black Sunday Tattoo Parlor alright look at that no it's not time for muscles yet Okay, so I should probably quit showing those off just yet. <laughs> Good thing Wyoming has an open carry permit for guns. <laughs> Easy boy. <laughs> Alright y'all, this is my newest drink combination. I'm going to dedicate this drink combination to all my sexy fans out there, all my sexy female fans. This is a drink combination I'm calling Cobra Angel. We have King Cobra's personal favorite, Jack Daniels. Next, we're going to mix in Monster Mutant Soda, bubbly pink champagne. Where'd you get champagne? At the liquor store. Cherry Coke, peach tea, and for the grand finale, we have Mountain Dew Black Label. Just like that. Josh, Andrew I'm Moore not spent his entire What's paycheck. Up? How many drinks is that? Oh, the other one. Okay. Right there, pour it just like that. Josh. This right here, YouTube, is a Cobra Angel cocktail. Cheers. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, uh... I just happened to be making a drink tonight called the Super Cobra Angel Drink Combo. Okay. And what's in that? Take a glass. It's Mountain Dew Black Label. Hold on, hold on, Josh. It's 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 the imposter's turn. The the you... imposter already had his turn. <laughs> okay. So what's in your drink? Uh, so we're gonna go with Pops Blue Label Ribbon. Wow. Oh, you got a rock star energy. Holy moly. 
got a original. Oh my! We God. got original flavor monster YouTube. Of course, we got a uh, our Mountain Dew, and then we got a Mountain Dew Kickstart. I'm not oh, wow. YouTube. <laughs> I should mention I'm not sponsored by Mountain Dew oh, or any weird. of these other <laughs> drinks. They just make really good products. Interesting. Uh, we got Four loco Lemonade. Oh, wow. So, Imposter, Josh just said you should add uh, some bleach to your drink combination. Some what? Some bleach. He should uh, come in his like he did last time. Oh, no. <laughs> With cream, too? And now we got our super... King Cobra Deluxe Angel Mega Drink. You don't even know. YouTube, you don't even know. Uh, we will let the people decide after. Um, so with that being said, Josh, I'd like to go to the guitar portion of the challenge. Now, there is a timer, and I notice you have a friend there. You have two minutes, Josh, to shred. Okay. So you have to I don't know if two you minutes is it. fast enough for him to learn how to shred. Josh's friend is a spice head, so I'm not too worried about what he thinks. No, actually, my friend Jeremy is not a spice head. He's never touched it. He says I his think the imposter Jeremy King Cobra smoked spice on his mom's vagina. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like shit. Yeah. Oh wow. Your time. Is that he, he's already more? he's already going. He's already going. <laughs> wow, imposter. Imposter. That was uh Wow. I thought this was a guitar competition, not a killer wow. neighbor's cat competition. He said... Okay, I thought this was a guitar guitar competition, not fucking your mom's dead pussy competition. Okay. I'll talk about killing the cat. Okay, I'll let him know that. Tell him his mom has... Well, hello, a Sean. Ah, 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 what's going on, you crazy-ass sons of bitches? All right, so hold on, guys. Check it out. This is how it's going to go. Just because we, no, we can't have... We can't have... Two Cobras talking over each other and two Sean's talking over each other. So this is going to be very simple. We're going to hey, go Sean. We're going to go joke for joke. Hey, real okay? Sean, how's it going? Hey, what's up? All right. Uh, Sounds look, good. Look at Sounds how good, sloppy Sean. that right. other Sean's is. All right. All right. Sure looks like shit, doesn't it? Yeah. Only a retard could draw it on so shitty. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, that's very good. He says, I'm, so this is what I'm going to do, Josh. I'm going to tell you the imposter's joke, and then you have a joke rebuttal, okay? That was Sounds good. good. Sounds okay. good, Sean. Okay, All so, right, cool. Josh, go ahead. Go ahead, Josh. My turn? Yes. All right. So, Sean, you have a joke? Yes, I got a joke. What's your joke? What's a necrophiliac's favorite band? I don't know, Sean. What is a necrophiliac's favorite band? The Grateful oh. Dead. <laughs> okay, uh, that's pretty good. So, imposter. Hey, Sean. I uh, I heard you're uh, working a new job. Yeah, it's all right so far. Uh, oh yeah, where are you working? I'm working in a mortuary. Oh yeah. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of being here. Uh, and why is that? Well, I'm used to being around assholes with no lives, and today's no different. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, Sean, what's up? I think uh, fake King Cobra JFS's parents should sue the condom factory because he was definitely an accident. I was under the impression that jokes were supposed to be funny. You know what else is funny? I think... Oh, it did happen, didn't it? You're right, Sean. Yeah, me and the skeleton from your joke tag team and bone fake King Cobra's mom. Oh! In the door real quick. Imposter. Yeah, he's, he's probably going to go give uh, Pasta King a quick blowy jig before uh, he goes let home. my friend out. 
he's a uh, he's leaving it, so he's gone now. Um, so my closing. What was right. this again? Sorry. So Josh, now we're gonna do uh, 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 magic. This is the same wand I used to conjure that thunderstorm. The same fucking video that the fake King Cobra JFS stole and made some bullshit up about how he came back reincarnated. You never died in the first place, dude. And my magic never brought That's you back to life. This like. whole thing has just been one desperate cry for attention. Okay, and okay, okay. You got it. Now I want to try to conjure an actual chi ball. Okay, so Josh is conjuring a chi ball right now. Better not be. Oh wow, I do see a little bit of energy in there. So there's certainly something in between his hands. See the energy right there? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. Wow. Okay, so he's moving his hands around. You can certainly see that there is... It looks like he's holding a real ball, imposter. Wow, that's a pretty cool trick. 